G'day everyone, Prep Aussie here. I hope you're all well in whatever part of the world you're watching this video. Today is Monday, or Tuesday, the 14th, I should know this date, it's my birthday, the uh, 14th of August 2018, and the time here is 08.15 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Well folks, I've been promising for a while, um, and it's finally happening. I now have Sean from SG2 Report on the line um, and we're, we're now going to undertake this interview that we've been trying to get done for the last year. <laughs> Morning Sean, how are you? Welcome aboard. Hey, thanks for having me back. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is, man. Between Here's the problem. It's a different day where I am. It's Monday. It's Tuesday for you. It's Monday for me. We keep getting the time zone screwed up and we've had nothing but technical problems. Having been forced to record this audio only on Skype, Zoom was even giving us trouble today. And of course, on Skype, you know, if anybody turns on their video, my Skype crashes. So we have to go audio only, but I appreciate you having me back. Mate, it's my pleasure. Um, and before I start, I personally would like to say thank you on behalf of myself and everybody else here in Australia for doing what you do, brother, because you are awakening a good many people and you are the, or you are the biggest voice out there in getting the, you know, the noise out there to make people get awake. And what you do is just unbelievable. So thank you from everyone here in Australia, mate. No, that's nice. It's not It's not really necessary or deserved. I, I feel like I should be doing more. I mean, do, do you ever feel like there's not enough time in a day? You have a family. I have a family. You have kids. I have kids. Um, we all have so many things going on in our daily lives just to survive and try to make ends meet. It's, it's just there's not enough time in a day. And with things happening as quickly as they're happening in this world, it's hard to report on all of it. So I'm really grateful that I have my website. Well... Com and uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, mate. You cut out for a second, but yeah, we can hear. Yeah, Skype. There you go. Can never count on Skype. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying, it just seems like there's not enough time in a day to cover all of the real news, right? Isn't have you found that to be true? I mean, CNN does a pretty good job filling 24 hours a day of nothing but fluff, but if you're going to cover the real news, my goodness, there's a lot of it, and it's hard to cover all of it. Uh, look, I've, I've said that count, countless times in my videos, mate. It, you just can't, um, you can't keep up. It's just impossible, you know. Um, so I, I cherry pick what I think is the most important things for me to discuss on that relevant day. But someone like yourself who, who is, you know, this is literally their job, then yeah, just, I don't know how you do it, mate. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in awe that you get so much out all the time, especially when I know, you know, what you're up against on your end. And, uh, you know, like I said to you, mate, God speak to you because you're just incredible. Well, I, again, I, I don't feel like I deserve that, but I really appreciate it. And it's booing to my spirits because as you know, uh, truth can be a, a, a lonely soldier. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lonely road because so many people still are not awake. I think people are waking up as evidenced by the walk away movement yep. uh, people on the left are even waking up and saying hey I may believe in certain things but I don't believe in totally open borders I don't believe in the destruction of the constitution and the bill of rights I don't believe in gun seizures and the end of the second amendment I don't believe in violent protesting and Antifa and all of the George Soros talking points and those people truly are walking away and they're coming back to the center and I think that is probably one of the best developments we've seen this year certainly one of the other best developments we've seen this year is the targeting of pedophilia by the Trump administration and uh, we can talk a little bit about that but a really important news item happening today as we're having this conversation is that agent Peter Stroke was fired finally from the FBI and Trump says the list of bad players in the FBI and DOJ gets longer and longer based on the fact that Stroke was in charge of the witch hunt will it be dropped it's a total hoax no collusion no obstruction I just fight back thank God we have President Trump in the White House as opposed to the wicked witch well I totally agree with you mate and 
my my actual thought on it is that they have they've got nothing to lose they've got they can't they're backed into a corner um and i still think that there's going to be a bombshell revelation from their side that is going to try and force trump to be impeached or they're going to subpoena him because he's not going to go and test he's not going to sit down with them and uh, i think they've got nowhere else to go so the whole this whole thing was to actually prove it if after all this information that people like yourself have highlighted as regards to this issue no one's been arrested nothing's been done then i'm now very skeptical that they are not going to stop or they are going to stop i mean that they're going to keep going their 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 aim here is to get trump in a courtroom and i'm pretty sure i think Mueller's going to drop a bombshell and that's going to be, you know, all hell will break loose then. Um, but, you know, you're in a better position than me. You know more about it. Um, it's scary for us here in Australia because, as well, because we've now got the point where one of our politicians, our ex-politicians, did actually lie. It's been proven. Um, Alexander Downer. Um, and the implications of that, just on its own, are very troublesome um, here in Australia because what where does this go? Well, it's it's almost funny to hear you say that one of your lawmakers is that what you said one of your politicians lied. Yeah. I mean, that's all that they do is lie. <clears throat> I, I mean, I think you have to be a professional <laughs> liar to become a politician. I mean, you probably aren't privy to this news item, but it's a big one here in the United States uh, today. Here, uh, three days ago, actually, West Virginia lawmakers moved to impeach entire Supreme Court of that state. West Virginia's House Judiciary Committee moved to impeach the state's entire Supreme Court this week. The committee filed 14 articles of impeachment against the four judges on Tuesday, and they will now go to the full House of Delegates for a vote. The article uh, articles allege that the justices, and then it names them, I won't name each one, have engaged in corruption, incompetency, neglect of duty, maladministration, and certain high crimes. So there is a house cleaning happening in this country. And I'll give you another super, super good piece of news. Uh, you probably saw this. Q has been reporting on it. Uh, on 8 8 18, August 8, 2018, the Justice Department had a Boeing 757, tail number N119NA, land in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, according to a local radio station reporter, DOJ employees were loading boxes of documents into that plane. And it's important to note that the Clinton Foundation headquarters is located in Little Rock. So once again, people say, flip side of the same coin, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, you're a fool if you think Donald Trump is going to make America great again. Do you honestly think that any of this stuff would be happening if the witch was in the White House? The Clinton Foundation crimes would go on in perpetuity. The illegal donations, paper play and bribes uh, to the Clinton Foundation uh, from foreign go governments would never have stopped. Uh, she would be in the White House. There would still be a seventh floor shadow government uh, at the State Department, which she set up and Donald Trump dismantled. Uh, pedophilia would still be rampant and out of control. And I have another share with you uh, regarding pedophilia. But do you honestly think that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are the same side of the same evil coin? I don't buy it for one minute. I, I would agree with you, mate, actually. Um... <sighs> The, the whole the whole thing and people need to understand this and I'm sure a lot of people do but the whole thing whether it's good or bad is all crumbling down um, and very soon we're going to be left with two options you know it'll be like a fork in the road you either go left or you go right and then once you travel down that path there'll be no going back um, yeah it's being set up like that as well you know there's as you said you know there, there's so much stuff going on in the in the world um trying to usurp good that it just has to happen that way unfortunately um i wanted to ask you mate <clears throat> when i when i said i wanted to do an interview with you um was i want people to understand who sean from sgt report is 
Um, and I said, I wouldn't, you know, you, you said, oh, please don't show them a photo or anything like that. I said, no, that's not what this is about. People, I just want people to connect with you to, to find out what was it um, that got so much under your skin that you just said, enough is enough. I can't stand this anymore. Well, so what was the moment when you just said, that's enough, I'm going to do this and I'm going to start talking the truth? Um, probably specifically, I mean, I could say, oh, it was learning about the Federal Reserve, but I think the real um, impetus was World Trade Center 7. So the collapse of that building obviously could not be explained, and the collapse of that building woke a lot of people up, including Richard Gage, who then went on and founded uh, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. And he's spent all of his time, full time since then, getting the word out about the need for a new investigation into what really happened on 9-11. And, you know, when I was in the workplace uh, back in the day and starting to wake up because of World Trade Center 7, and then I saw that BBC um, coverage uh, live on 9-11 in which the um, live exchange between uh, the BBC uh, host in the UK is talking to the reporter Jane Stanley, and she's in New York, and she's explaining that the Solomon Brothers building has collapsed as it still stands behind her in the video <laughs> is the most shocking thing in the world. Because then after the, uh, the feed, the live feed fizzles out after 10 minutes, 20 minutes later, that building did collapse. So they were reporting about the collapse of a third building in New York City at 5.05, 5.10 in the afternoon, and that building didn't collapse until 525. It is absolutely outrageous. And it made my blood boil. And I'll tell you, here's the thing, Alan, that really made me, um, I guess the most shocking thing to me was in my naivete. I believe that just explaining these couple of things we've just talked about, World Trade Center 7, look at these people talk about it collapsing before it collapsed, 20 minutes later it collapses. Just those three anomalies out of the hundreds of anomalies on 9-11, I thought I could wake up friends and colleagues, people with whom I worked and people who I played poker with and, you know, other executives where I worked and I couldn't do it. And their cognitive dissonance was so powerful that if I even showed them the interview, uh, the BBC exchange with Jane Stanley, they'd say, well, that can't be real. You know, you can't believe everything you see on the internet. These people are so entrenched in this system that if 9-11 was a false flag operation perpetrated by dark forces within our government and other governments, maybe including the Mossad, they don't want to talk about it and they can't bring themselves to bear the possibility that that's true and that the official story may not be true. And to me, that was the most extraordinary thing. I just could not believe that those people didn't have the eyes to see and the ears to hear what I had the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Like, I, it's shocking to me. It made me believe that most of our countrymen are under some form of mass hypnotism and they cannot break their conditioning. Even when the evidence of a deep state operation is played out right in front of their own eyes, they still buy the official story and we'll hear nothing of it. Now, I think more and more people are starting to wake up a little bit and maybe are willing to take a, take a look at 9-11. Um, and certainly people are waking up to the crimes of the deep state, right? Now, see, here's the thing. Because Trump is in the White House, people may say, oh, there's this witch hunt going on, and the DNC is so corrupt, and the FBI is so corrupt, and uh, that's all true. And the good news about this witch hunt against Trump is that that deep state apparatus is now so obvious, it's operating wide open, it's operating in the wide open. So more and more Americans are waking up and getting really, really pissed off about it. And actually, I've seen some polls, Alan, where it says, what is the number one problem facing uh, uh, America? Uh, and, And people who answer that poll will say, if given the choice, overwhelmingly, the number one problem is the deep state. So people are waking up to this. I mean, this idea that, oh, we have a republic and we have elected politicians that are supposed to represent us, but really behind that are these shadow government powers that seem to really do a pretty good job remaining in the shadows prior to, prior to 9-11. 
But after 9-11, there was this slow awakening that has begin, begun to snowball into a very, very fast, rapid awakening. Think how far we've come since 2001 to 2018 in the past 17, 18 years. How many people are awake to how these governments are really being operated? And the puppet masters who sit atop the governments, right? The George Soros types, yeah. the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the banking powers, uh, the, the Vatican. Uh, so there is truly a great awakening happening, and I think that is the best news, right? There's a great awakening happening where people are starting to, I think, break their, well, their hypnotism spell yeah. that we've been under since we were little kids. Yeah. Well... A lot of people don't know this about me personally, but uh, I'm an ex-construction manager. Um, used to do big buildings. And the day that they dropped the buildings, there was never any doubt in my mind and anyone that I went to college with at the time, because I was actually going to college at the time, um, that if you build a, build a big building, it's physically impossible to actually drop the whole building in one go, um, unless you're structurally weakening the internals to make it drop exactly as the two towers did and as Tower 7 did. Tower 7 was definitely a, um, uh, a controlled demolition job, but there's no way, folks, and I've done it for many years and I know what goes into building big buildings, there's no way you could drop a 100-storey tower down to the basement or the lower level basements unless you'd actually structurally weakened it first or structurally weakened it as it was falling because eventually it'll come to what's called a tipping point and the, the actual building will remain standing and the rest will slide off or the whole building will tilt to one side and uh, it just didn't sit well with any of us at, at college we were just like well how did that happen how, it, it's just physically impossible even if the load is so much coming down eventually it will stop because you have to, <laughs> a lot of people don't well, understand the core areas the core area just doesn't move it's just not possible so yeah look well and the bigger problem as it pertains to 9-11 is that NIST which was tasked uh, by the government to explain the collapse of World Trade Center 7 couldn't explain the collapse of that building because they wouldn't account for the possibility that explosives were used. So their official report on why World Trade Center 7 collapsed uh, wasn't issued for, I don't even remember how long, seven, eight, nine years, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And um, when it finally came out, they had invented some new theory, like, and that's all it is. It's some, some new, uh, this progressive collapse thing, which is impossible to happen in seven seconds, free fall speed. So NIST <laughs> refuses to account for explosives saying that well we know explosives weren't used in that building so we're not going to even you know deal with that uh hypothesis um so but we know we know what brought that building down and it certainly was explosives i i've always said to people think about by the way that 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 building was never even hit by an airplane. But as it pertains to the first two buildings think of one of those grand sequoia those great big or an old oak tree think of a giant beautiful tree um, some of these things, you know, a park, they'll get, you know, 100 feet high, whatever, 70 yep. feet high. Blow a hole right through the top third of it. What do you think is going to happen to that tree? Is the rest of the tree, is the top of the tree going to come down on the remaining tree, tr tree trunk and pile drive that thing into dust? Obviously, absolutely not. 100% impossible. And you can make the same argument to some degree with the steel cores of the World Trade Centers uh, 1 and 2. They had some of the biggest steel cores, I believe somewhere in the neighborhood of 54 steel cores. Uh, I used to know this stuff by heart, but I don't talk about it that much anymore. But, yeah, you can't take these buildings down without explosives. So the whole 9-11 thing is just one shady operation, and, of course, it was all done because there were hundreds of billions of dollars worth of bonds coming due um, that day and or the next day, and everything was able to be covered up. There was some... Real mal malfeasance going on. Gold below the buildings was being stolen. Uh, they found, well, it, we don't even have to get into it. But the, the whole thing, just a deep state operation from beginning to end. Well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you exactly what happened to me 
for me to wake up was actually I was in America. Um, and if anybody's been to Dealey Plaza in uh, Dallas, if you've ever shot a gun or you know you've been taught how to shoot a gun, whether you're in the army or like my, my father was a sniper in the army, so he taught us how to use a gun proficiently. And I stood there and I looked up at that building and I went, there's no way this man shot the president. He might have shot him once, but he didn't shoot him any times after that because, you know, distances, uh, a bolt action rifle, it's just not possible. So that was when, that was my big moment where I woke up uh, and just went, there's something wrong with this. And I started looking into more and more stuff. And then obviously 9-11 happened, like you said. So, mate, moving on from that, I'm going to ask you some shocking stuff now as regards to the paedophilia. Because here in Australia, um, it seems very bizarre to us. Like, we don't, we, we, we personally here, Although it must exist, and there's uh, a woman in Australia who's actually exposing it now, her name's Fiona Barrett. But there is, if you haven't interviewed her, you should try and get hold of her, mate, because the stuff she is saying is just, it's so mind-blowing that it's just impossible to believe. You know what I, I mean? I think she's, she's named Hillary Clinton specifically, hasn't she? Yeah. Oh, she, look, she's named Richard Nixon. Um, look, without going into graphic detail, it's pretty shocking she's named just about every single high level politician policeman everybody here in australia um mate can i ask you to explain to everyone here in australia what i don't i don't really know the question myself really how 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 do you know this is true and because you know they're not running down the street saying i'm a pedophile and you know etc so how do you know this is true and how do you know that it's it's based within their demonic system that they've got going that is at the head of it all you know um could you explain that to us here because look we we probably we're probably naive down here um in that regard but you know in america every time i read something recently i found out that nearly a million children go missing each year in america i it, I find that, I've heard that figure, I find that stat um, very difficult to believe because in a nation of 300 million people, if you had a million people, a million kids vanish a year, I mean, it would be, you'd be hearing about this on the news in your city every single day. So I'm not sure what those, and I'm, I'm not saying those numbers aren't true. I, I think that those, that specific number is a little hard to believe, and it may include, you know, runaways and stuff like that. But look, the bottom line is that there's something going on in the world at the highest levels of government that I can quantify for you with just a few names and people can do their own digging. But then I'll quantify it specifically with a piece of news coming out of uh, the Department of Justice here in the United States. So historically speaking, you know, you guys as Aussies are all well aware of the power of the Queen of England yep. and uh, the Commonwealth. The British Empire is just that. It's not about the British citizens. It's not about the Aussie citizens. It's not about Canadian citizens. It's about the Queen, and it's about the power and the reach and the breadth and the scope of the kingdom. And the problem with the Queen is that she seems to have had many, many, many high-level pedophiles in and around her government for decades, uh, probably the most famous of which is Jimmy Savile. And Jimmy Savile... It's well known that he was trafficking children to the elite in London. There's been UK documentaries done uh, about this. Jimmy Savile was also a necrophilic. Uh, he was also a um, person who just happened to be knighted by the Queen and was best friends with the Prince. And so much so that the Prince uh, wanted to, and I don't know if he did, but wanted to make Jimmy, Sa Jimmy Savile the godfather um, to his sons. So Jimmy Savile was... A hardcore pedophile and he worked uh, for the BBC as an entertainer for decades and decades and decades and you know <laughs> this was all covered up and uh, I'll give you another name Sir Edward Heath a former prime minister it's hard to get much higher in uh, the echelons of power in the UK than prime minister uh, and after he died it was 
basically admitted to that he was uh, involved in the murders of as many as 16 children. And then there's another one, and I don't have his name in front of me. I'm going by memory. It's either Heyman or Clayman. Um, and he was a, the former head of the MI6. Same, same story involved in this kind of stuff. Um, there is a huge, huge problem with pedophilia and satanic ritual abuse in the UK, in the United States, in Australia, in the Netherlands, all over the world. And it is something that uh, started to come out um, in a big way in this country with the investigation of something called Pizzagate. That's sort of the catch-all phrase for the potentiality of people in the Democratic Party going all the way up to Hillary Clinton being involved in child sex trafficking. And as it relates to Hillary Clinton specifically, the most easy thing to point to is that when um, Laura Silsby, a friend of the Clintons, got caught at the Haitian border trying to smuggle out 33 children after that devastating Haitian earthquake, uh, she was caught, and guess who came to her aid? Bill and Hillary Clinton. So um, that's just one of many issues. But then the whole Pizzagate investigation centered on Comet Ping Pong and James Alephantis and all of the businesses around Comet Ping Pong and uh, the Instagram of uh, James Alephantis uh, with very, very suggestive images of children and babies and toddlers being called whores and all sorts of just despicable stuff which led a lot of independent researchers researchers to go down um, that path so with that said i just want to share this information because it's important and uh my friend andy on patreon uh one of my patrons uh reminded me of this because of course i re reported about it back in in june but it's important. He says, just Google 2300 arrested in quotes and notice that there are no mainstream news articles about this massive story from June. Not only that, but the number of results keeps decreasing, he says, as he's been following the story, meaning the mainstream media refuses to report on this. There yeah. used to be numerous local reports, but now I can't even find those. Here's what he's talking about. This is June 12th, 2018. And again, Alan this news item would have ever appeared if Hillary Clinton was in the White House. More than 2,300 <laughs> suspected online child sex offenders arrested during Operation Broken Heart. Now, let me just read this to you. The task force identified 195 offenders who either produced child pornography or committed child sex abuse and 383 children who suffered recent ongoing or historical sexual abuse or production of child pornography. Let me jump down. No child should ever have to endure sexual abuse, Attorney General Jeff Sessions said. And yet in recent years, certain forms of modern technology have facilitated the spread of child pornography and created greater incentive, incentives for its production. We at the Department of Justice are determined to strike back against these repugnant crimes. It is shocking and very sad that in just this one operation, we've arrested more than 2,300 alleged child predators and investigated some 25,200 sexual abuse complaints. Any would-be criminal should be warned. This department will remain relentless in hunting down those who victimize our children. And uh, I'll go on because I think it's important. People say, oh, it can't be so widespread. It can't be that big a problem. It can't reach to the highest echelons of power. Well, if you think about how these intelligence agencies operate and these honey... If you're some sicko who has some penchant for kids... And they, they put you in a situation where you can, ha you can have your way with a kid and they videotape it, then you're in their pocket for the rest of your career. Do you think you're not going to do their bidding? Do you think you're not going to help push forward their new world order agenda? And I think President Trump and Sessions is cleaning house of this stuff to a large degree. Uh, this thing goes on to say the operation targeted suspects who, number one, produce, distribute, receive, and possess child porn. Number two, engage in online enticement of children for sexual purposes. Number three, engage in sex trafficking of children. And number four, those who travel across state lines or to foreign countries and sexually abuse children. This is a dragnet that's global. And uh, I'll tell you. It's good news, folks. It's great news because none of this would be happening if Hillary Clinton were in the White House. And I can tell you this, that Boeing 757 that landed in Little Rock back on 8818 and hopefully got all the documents they needed to get out of the Clinton Foundation, that, that plane wouldn't have been there either. That's, you know, I, I, 
my in my mind now you've said all that it's really i'm still struggling um one of the reasons why i haven't branched into any of this stuff is because it's very hard for me to get actual facts um it, it, pertaining to it here in australia like um it's not in the mainstream news you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so i would be a little bit wary about going forward with the whole pedophilia thing um oh by the way I, by the way i just googled because i want to give you the right name it was sir peter Heyman. yeah sir peter Heyman, how thatcher's mi5 spy i said mi6 mi5 spy chief protected pedophiles and then, of course, it was revealed that he was likely a pedophile himself. So the highest echelons of power surrounding that queen, all pedophiles. Explain that to me. I mean, first <laughs> of all, how goddamn sick do you have to be to want to diddle kids? That's the part I can't get my brain around, man. And I think that's probably the part that people struggle with. I think that's the biggest thing that people struggle with. They're like, this can't be this widespread because... It, that's such a, a Sodom and Gomorrah aberration. Who would be into something so disgusting and despicable? Children are precious. Who would want to defile that? But I think some of these people, um, they get into doing anything evil. The more evil they can be, the happier they are. And I, I've just really come to believe that that's what's going on here. This is, again, I've said it before, you know, this is spiritual warfare. You want to go down to the very bottom of the rabbit hole? What you're going to find is that we are in a spiritual war, and Q talks about this a lot. This is a battle between black and white and good and evil. That's what's happening here. And I like to see our cup is half full uh, with Trump, because if, if Hillary had gotten in the White House, man, it would have been game over. Q has said it would be literally hell on earth, and I firmly believe that. It would have been hell on earth. I mean, imagine what we're battling in this country when Trump is in the White House. You still have CNN lying all day long and not yeah, reporting anything yeah. and covering up Hillary's crimes. Yeah. Look. So imagine how bad it would be if she was in the White House and still had all that power. Oh, my God. It, yeah. it truly would have been hell on earth, I'm telling you. Mate, it's, you said something to Liz Crokin a while ago in one of your interviews with her that really struck, struck me. Um, was You said to Liz, has anybody filed a lawsuit against you for bringing this out and she just said no and that was I think that was the moment when I thought well why not I think you were mainly talking about Podesta's but um, I couldn't help but wonder why no one's taken a there's been not been one even though these people are mentioned all the time there's not been one lawsuit taken out to stop anybody saying any of this stuff so it kind of leads you down the path to think, well, yeah, this is this really is true. Well, you make a good point, because think about all of the mud. I guess if it weren't true, it would be called mud. Uh, but think of all the accusations being hurled at John and Tony Podesta. Yeah, look, that's just a mate. I can't, I can't. John and Tony Podesta, if they were 100% innocent, of the allegations being hurled at them as being involved in child sex trafficking and pedophilia, um, they could sue anybody they want. They could have sued Breitbart back in 2011. Do you remember that tweet? Yeah. Do you remember what Breitbart said? Yeah. And then, find and it for you and I'll read it. There's, there's nothing that's ever been done about any of this, mate. There's no lawsuits, no nothing. And even if you are an evil despot scumbag, then I would say that you're going to want some recourse back in courts to stop people saying this stuff about you. But as far as I know, you know, you won't be able to tell us, has there been even one court case where someone's gone, you can't say that about me, that's not true, um, I'm taking you to court. Because let's be honest, yourself and Liz Crokin are not small people in this uh, this field that we're, we're in, and they reach a good, you know, you guys must reach millions of people. So I'm guessing there's million people, millions of people around the world that are, you know, now knowledgeable about the pedestrians. But there's never been a court case, and I, you know, it's just amazing to me. Uh, well, yeah, I think that the the issue is that um, these people don't want uh, disclosure or discovery in a court of law. I mean, um, the. I don't know why, I tell you what, I've been having so many problems lately with my computers, I just wonder why I have such poor internet. Um, 
speeds. But uh, Breitbart tweeted on February 4th, 2011, how Prague guru, meaning progressive guru, Mm -hmm. John Podesta, isn't a household name as a world-class, underage, meaning kids, sex slave operation cover-upper defending unspeakable dregs escapes me. 2011. Nobody had heard of Pizzagate. None of us were talking or knew about Comet Ping Pong. Um, n- none of us had ever heard, really, the name James Elephantis, the former lover of David Brock, yeah, a high-level DNC operative. So this stuff was stuff Breitbart knew back in 2011. I mean, how ahead of his time was he? So... I mean, believe me, we've known that pedophilia and child sex trafficking has been a problem in this country for decades with the Franklin cover-up and, you know, other things that have gone on in this country, but um, nobody ever dreamed that it was as bad as it is globally and that it is truly handled just like the Mexican drug cartels handle their production of drugs. I mean, we're talking an industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, trafficking in human beings. And trafficking in children and the sexual images of, of children, child porn, yeah. is a multi-billion dollar industry. I don't understand it. I don't know why any adults would ever, ever be into that kind of stuff. But it is what it is, and it needs to, it needs to be stopped. And that's what the Pizzagate investigation was all about. And it does appear that John Podesta, who has been in the... Um, Bill Clinton administration and the Hillary Clinton, um, uh, you know, not administration, but in in Hillary's uh, power centers. And he was, I believe, her um, election, uh, what do you call it, election um, campaign manager or whatever. Yeah, so he appears to be tied to this stuff for a very long time. And Podesta uh, was called out by Breitbart in 2011, and there was no lawsuit. I mean, do you think if, if there was nothing there, do you think that Podesta wouldn't sue Breitbart? I mean, that's an easy case to win, well, that's, right? Yeah, that's my point. I just don't understand. <laughs> it's libel. You yeah. can't tweet that about somebody if it's not true, because you're going to get yourself sued. That's libel. To say it is slander, and to write it is libel. Uh, Breitbart's a, a smart guy. He knew he wasn't going to get sued, because he was telling the truth. Yeah, I, that's that's why I just say, I just don't understand, you know... Yeah. There's, there's never been a court case. It's no liable suits, no nothing. So, did, can you explain to everyone here in Australia as well, mate, please? God, it's so hard, isn't it, to talk about this stuff? Because um, it just, as I said to everyone, if I ever found a person doing this, or, you know, I'll be the first one out, out the front with a blunt knife to cut their knackers off, you know? It's just, um, it, I, I can't function in my brain about it that well than myself so look can you can you do us a just do a quick brief and tell everyone how this is going to play out in the future or how you think this is going to play out in the future as regards to the pedophilia the satanic stuff you know how is this how do you think this is going to play out because it seems to me that trump and sessions and everyone else is dotting i's crossing t's um, and it may be another two years before we see anything really, but it seems to me they're being very, very methodical in the way they're doing stuff. So over to you, see, see what you think. Well, you know what? I, I, I think the best thing to do would be to encourage people to follow Q and read the posts coming from Q. And if, look, do you follow Q at all, Alan? I, I do. I didn't. But I am okay. now, and uh, I. the only way that I can, because as you said yourself, there's so much information out there. The only way that I can actually keep up with that information is, um, I'll, I'll give him a plug actually, uh, a good friend of mine, Stroppy Me. He does a Q reading every day on all the Q posts. Um, and that's how I keep abreast of the situation really, because otherwise I just wouldn't get the time. Well, the reason I bring it up is because if people just want to go to qanon.pub, P-U-B, so www.qanon.pub, you can read 
all of the latest Q posts as they come out. And there's a whole new movement on YouTube by a lot of great producers to then make videos about the latest from Q, some of them trying to analyze what some of the codes mean. Sometimes Q uses codes. Q always uses abbreviations for names, so like HC would be Hillary Clinton. So, very interesting stuff coming from Q. And there's been a counter movement on YouTube by what I think are largely COINTELPRO uh, type people, um, who many of them sit around and make videos, you know, six hour videos a day. Like, uh, who could who could do that? Who yeah, could, somebody's yeah. somebody's paying you to do that because <laughs> you don't get enough views and you're not making enough money via YouTube monetization uh, to make that sustainable. So I firmly believe some of these people are COINTELPRO. But the point is this. The idea is that Q, according to Q, I think himself, is an insider with Q-level security clearance, right? And there have been many posts that suggest Q has been near, on a regular basis, the president, has perhaps even traveled with the president um, to foreign countries. And so this counter-movement on YouTube suggests that Q is a LARP, it's all some big game by some kid sitting in his basement, and someday we're, someday we're all going to look like fools because we reported on Q. <clears throat> what Q is saying is that there are white knights, and there was a plan to prevent this Hillary Clinton presidency in this quote-unquote hell on earth. Um, Q has said you have no idea how evil these people are. It's even worse than you can imagine, but you're going to have to want to know to know. Like People have to choose to wake up. You can't force your friends' neighbors to wake up. They have to want to wake up, and they have to do the research themselves. The point is this. You ask how this is all going to play out. Had Hillary Clinton got into the White House, I think we know what would have happened, because uh, whether underground infiltrator Larry Grafwall told us that the plans of the weather underground, which included Bill Ayers, all that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton look up to, friends of the Obamas for sure, Bill Ayers, uh, the plans of the Weather Underground was to usurp the Constitution, get their people in the highest places of power, including the presidency, and usher in a Marxist communist future for this country. And anybody that couldn't be re-educated to those communist ways would have to be, in their words, terminated. And when asked how many people would have to die, they said probably 30 million people. So we can see what the plan, I think, would have been, this New World Order, globalist, communist, Marxist, hell-on-earth plan that Hillary Clinton probably would have had the next eight years to push, or at least pound the final nails in our coffin. So a to get an honorable president into the White House, somebody who would respect the sovereignty of our country, rule of law, and what I've said to people regarding Q in this quote-unquote plan is this. We know what the counter plan was because we can now see the deep state operating in the wide open, right? Yeah. We can see... They're not the even Podestas trying to hide it anymore. ...and Mueller and Clapper and all of these people targeting our sitting president, right? And calling him a criminal and saying he should be impeached and making threats. This deep state apparatus is in the wide open. What I'm saying as it pertains to Q is that it's very possible, and it seems highly likely to me, given all of the... Q proofs that we now have, things that he has said or predicted or pointed to that then came into fruition. It seems to me that if we know there's a deep state, an evil deep state, that is now being forced to operate in the wide open, there is a counter deep state to that, which does want to defend the sovereignty of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution. And that counter deep state, the White Knights, I guess I should say, is being made public with drops by Q. So go to qanon.pub and follow this story in real time for yourself. I mean, the latest uh, Q post is from uh, August 13th, today. So you guys can follow this stuff in real time and then get active. I mean, look at how many people are walking away here in the United States. They're walking away from the DNC corruption. They saw what the DNC did to uh, Bernie Sanders. They stole it from Bernie and they gave it to Hillary. And that was all pre-decided before a single vote was cast. We know it all. It's all out. All, all of it's out. Now, CNN won't report on it, but neither will CNN report on the fact that Hillary Clinton play, uh, paid to have the dossier written, essentially. <laughs> so Hillary Clinton seriously needs to be in shackles. And 
I really do pray, you know, Q has said there will come a point where these people will not be safe walking down the street because their crimes will be known. I know their crimes. You know many of their crimes. But many of our friends, neighbors, and colleagues still are not aware of how bad it is. No, and Q has no. said it's even worse than you can imagine. So how will this play out? I'm not exactly sure. I hope Q's right, and I hope we see high-level arrests in perp walks. I hope we see... Um, military tribunals for hardcore traitors because that's what many of these people are they're hardcore traitors to the united states constitution and they need to pay the price for being traitors and sadly for them one of the penalties for being a traitor one of the penalties for treason is death it's not the only penalty but it's one of the possibilities so these people that were so willing to sell their souls to the devil and sell out their country to people like the rothschilds in this globalist, this Soros, Marxist, evil one-world government plan, uh, they're on call now because there's a new sheriff in town, right? And it's not Hillary. Hillary's not sitting in the White House. So I think that all of these people are probably scared to death that this is the way it's playing out. And that's why the deep state is now so obvious. They're in a panic. Because yeah. the deep state, by definition, they want to remain hidden. They want to remain deep. They don't want anybody to know that there's a shadow government that's really the power brokers in Washington, D.C., but now they, they're panicked. They have to come out. They have to literally say, well, maybe the deep state, and I just heard one of their operatives recently say this on CNN, when will the deep state have to take control of the government? Yeah. Because certainly we can't, we can't have this president continue to remain in charge. Yeah. So they're, they're terrified. So our only hope is that this president, with honest people that he has now in government, because he's cleaning house, trying to clean house, at the Department of Justice uh, and uh, at the, um, uh, well, in, in all the various, I mean, he's certainly well, has every a level of FBI. government. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if he can have honest people, honorable people, who will just merely enforce the laws on the books, then these people will be rounded up, and they will be arrested, and they will be tried for their crimes, right? Yeah. So that's my hope. I mean, <laughs> all my eggs are in that basket because, again, you know, we only have Trump for, you know, a couple more years and then hopefully four more, so a total of six years. He hopefully will get a lot done in that six years, and hopefully there will be enough of, awakening, of an awakening that the next time there's a pre presidential election that does not include him, hopefully we will get two truly honest candidates who respect the Constitution and the sovereignty of our nation. I mean, hopefully that's where this is headed, well, because the, the alternative is absolute despotism. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's game over, one world government, and that's it. Done. Well, I, one of the reasons that I've been so keen on getting you on um, is to help bind people's collective thoughts together as regards to, um, although you're American and I'm an Australian, um, I've had lots of people comment about this, you know, oh, well, the, you know, what goes on in America is no, doesn't matter to us, blah, 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 blah. Well, people need to collectively, if you're thinking like that, you need to stop thinking like that. Um, as for example, if Shaw mentions the Second Amendment, well, you better believe that the Second Amendment in the first, in the fourth, whatever it is at the moment, pertains to the world. Because unless America gets this right, then all those rights that are written in the American Constitution are going to be taken away from everybody. So everyone needs to understand that this is not, as Q says, where we go one, we go all. It's This has to be a collective worldwide movement for people to realize that you are going to lose, if America falls and the Constitution gets trashed, the American Constitution gets trashed, then we are all in a very, very bad situation. That's right. Well, and they already took your guns, right? Yeah. So, all right. Well, look, I, I would just ask people to check out QAnon.pub, get yourself up to speed on this. There's some great people um, reporting about um, Q posts on YouTube. You could follow Praying Medic, uh, Space Shot 76. Um, just there's a ton of them out there doing yeah, um, good yeah. stuff about Q so folks can follow those on YouTube and um, I would just say this Alan if people want to follow real news instead of the crap coming from CNN 
they can check out my website. It's sgtreport.com, where we post from a variety of trusted alt media news sources on a daily basis. So you'll get my stuff always sticky at the top. If you want to see my latest video, it's always at the top. Uh, but scroll down, and you're going to get news items updated throughout the day, every single day, 24-7, uh, reporting about the real news, the way to explain the real news through the lens of truth as opposed to that opaque um, mainstream media way that they do it, which yep. is generally to obfuscate truth uh, and to leave out key important details. The other thing I'd say is you can follow my website, thelibertymill.com. And for those who just want to find great YouTube videos, Alan, I noticed this. Um, I was going to mention my site, thephaser.com. That's P-H-A-S-E-R. If you go to thephaser.com, you're going to get videos served up that I myself select uh, every day that I think people would benefit from watching. And, you know, I just recently sort of realized that that site does actually have a lot of value because when they terminated my YouTube channel, Alan, mm -hmm. I, I only had my backup channel. And when I went to my backup channel, I realized, well, there's been years and years and years that have gone by that I haven't subscribed to any of these new people that I've been following. And so my point is, is that if you're new to YouTube, you're never going to find these awesome alternative sources. Like you don't know what their channel names are. They're not going to be offered up to you in your feed. So what I'm doing at the Phaser is I'm curating content of good people that are making good videos that I think you'll benefit from watching that you'll never find on your own unless you're subscribed to those channels. Yeah, and most that's people aren't. True. So that, that's the value of the phaser. Mate, look, we'll leave it at that. Um, thank you for your time. We've just got one last thing to do, which is the prayer. I always finish with a prayer, if that's okay. Um, that's great. And look, I'll say it again. On behalf of all Australians, thank you for what you do, brother. It's You're amazing. Um, I'll also would say that I, I just honestly don't know how you keep up, but I'm glad you do. You know, I'm glad that there is someone like you inspiring all of us to just keep going. You know, the things that have happened to you recently have just proven, don't stop, just keep going. You know, have yeah. patience and, you know, we are winning. So just keep yeah. going. Yeah. Well, back, back at you, brother. I appreciate everything that everybody's doing. Because, again, I think tons and tons of people are waking up. And there's tons and tons of new voices on YouTube that didn't exist two, three, four, five, six years ago. So uh, so thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all your kind words. And uh, now let's have that prayer. Okay, folks. Well, as always, we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Um, and really, after everything we've just... Well, after everything Sean's just said, really... Um, it makes you aware that there is a bigger power out there and you need to find, as I've said before, you need to find some time to encompass yourself spiritually in God, whether that's through Jesus Christ or just God on his own. You have to find time to do that because it's solely needed at the moment, folks. So the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sean, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure and it's been a privilege. Um, we'll leave it there. Any last any last thoughts you'd like to say to the Australian audience, mate? No, I, I just appreciate it. Thanks so much, Alan. And uh, I'd like to say uh, thanks to everybody who prays for all of the truth tellers. Because as my friend uh, James Perloff, author James Perloff, has said, truth is a lonely warrior. So, uh, <laughs> but again, where we go on, where we go on, we we go all. And I, I think that is the new code for humanity. Let's all stand together and let's put these hardcore Satanists in the cells they belong in. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, mate. God bless, brother. God bless. Prep out.